Hello, my name is Yuri Resnik. I work for Brightcov, and today I'll talk about what we have learned about the behavior of web streaming. The talk will have a few parts. I'll uh, have some introductory material at the beginning, talking about what is web streaming, what is the architecture, uh, analytics uh, events, uh, uh, existing uh, playback data sets which we are using for the study and references for, uh, to existing literature. And, and then I'll, I'll talk about specific observations that we have made and particularly introduce a model of a streaming client and, and show that it uh, actually fits well to experimental data and uh, to drive some uh, observations based on, on, on this model and its parameters. And then I'll talk a bit about uh, various applications that uh, uh, could be developed uh, by using this model and by uh, using this knowledge about uh, uh, web streaming and its adaptation model. Now, what is web stream? Well, uh, most generally, it probably could be understood as uh, delivery of videos embedded in web pages. Uh, it's typically done by ABR streaming protocols such as HLS or Dash. Uh, web browsers are used as streaming clients with uh, some uh, JavaScript-based engines uh, deciding which segments to pull and, and feeding them into browsers, MSCMA engines. And uh, remarkably enough, uh, web streaming these days uh, is reaching uh, pretty much all devices. As well devices have uh, browsers, PCs, laptops, tablets, connected TV, setup boxes, and so on. Now, uh, what is the underlying architecture of uh, ABR streaming systems? It's shown on this uh, uh, plot. Uh, delivery is done by uh, uh, modern era protocols such as HLS or Dash, and uh, so encoding is done in multiple streams with uh, uh, different bit rates, resolutions used it for, it for each stream. Uh, streams are chopped in segments, uh, uh, compositions of such segments and so-called manifest uh, files are placed on origin servers, and then CDN is used to propagate uh, all this data to the uh, end user devices, and, and user devices uh, correspondingly pull them and uh, then streaming clients decide in real time which uh, rendition, which segments to pull. Importantly, the composition of uh, logs from all these devices and then collected uh, by the analytic system. And this is how we could uh, try to look at uh, what was happening during uh, the system and try to analyze it. And uh, specifically, uh, this picture shows uh, you know, one hypothetical uh, example and, and, and explains basic principle of adaptive bitrate streaming. So the continuous line shows how a bandwidth fluctuates in time and then uh, a client that uh, naturally tries to maintain continuous playback will uh, decide dynamically which uh, uh, segments from which renditions to, to pull such that uh, that playback could be uh, sustained. And uh, and if bandwidth drops, it of course uh, decides to pull a, a lower bitrate rendition, and if bandwidth increases, it then tries to pull higher bitrate rendition. Sometimes it might be not successful, sometimes it might uh, run into buffering, uh, sometimes it might dro drop some uh, segments that already loaded as it tries to uh, do more rapid adaptation. So there are multiple sources of sources of inefficiencies and uh, uh, problems in the system. So this is why analytic systems are used. And uh, this diagram shows the types of events that uh, typical analytic systems are capturing and importantly, engagement events, which are collected at a pink interval of about 10 seconds, uh, sent uh, back uh, to analytic system information about how many seconds of video were played, uh, what was the bit rate and other parameters. In fact, uh, this table, shows uh, a typical compositions of parameters that could be sent by analytic system. But importantly, uh, they also include measurements of available network bandwidth, uh, some uh, playback statistics, how many seconds were buffered, and so on. So, uh, and uh, in fact, <clears throat> as part of this work, we are making available this data set, which includes uh, logs of uh, four events, about uh, 50 millions of uh, uh, records, and uh, it's large enough to, to enable uh, studies, uh, which uh, of course we provide one example of it, and we encourage 
uh, other researchers to take a look and uh, maybe came up with something even more, even more advanced. But uh, this is a reference to so a few papers published before, of course, with standing on shoulders of giants. Uh, many of things been studied. Uh, so this contribution is really an add-on to uh, uh, many things that's been discovered before. Our objective here is to uh, bring uh, most uh, uh, recent and uh, relevant from practical uh, point of view examples of uh, data and try to look at uh, uh, what we can learn based on what's deployed today in the field. So <clears throat> with this, let me uh, Start with the slide, and, and this slide shows statistics of event uh, four in our data set. And what we see on the right is encoding profile, five renditions. In the middle, we see a network bandwidth distribution as observed by measured BPS reported by uh, clients. Then there is a distribution of video player sizes, which we see about 11 resolutions as most distinct and uh, highly used uh, in, in, in this uh, event. And, and then at the bottom, we are showing uh, conditional uh, probability distributions of load of each uh, rendition as function of either a bandwidth on the right or player size on the left. <clears throat> and what we observe is that uh, uh, it looks like uh, uh, players are adapting not only to bandwidth, which uh, by, by science and all principles uh, should be happening, uh, but players seems to be adapting to uh, player sizes as well, uh, in, in choices of renditions. Uh, and one way it manifests itself is that if we look at high bandwidth regime, uh, where uh, bandwidth is no longer an issue, and we would expect uh, players to pull highest bitrate rendition, which is, is fifth rendition with 2100 <coughs> kilobits uh, bitrate, uh, which is shown as CN. It turns out this is not a most popular, not, not most uh, frequently loaded rendition in this region. It's, it's a different one that becomes uh, even uh, more prominent, and uh, and that uh, seems to be influenced by resolution. So uh, how <coughs> we can make sense of uh, what we observe? So uh, to do this, we propose a model. And uh, the model has three parts. It includes adaptation to just network bandwidth, then adaptation to player size, and then combined model. So as adaptation to bandwidth, we use a simple truncation model where uh, we uh, try to, uh, uh, we're saying that clients pick highest possible uh, bitrate uh, rendition not to cross uh, bandwidth scaled by uh, uh, a constant, one, uh, 1 over 1 plus delta, where delta is some parameter. <clears throat> I'll explain why we introduce this parameter a bit later, but this is a model for network bandwidth adaptation. The uh, adaptation to player sizes is modeled uh, by, uh, in this case, uh, a, a quantizer, uh, and, and where there is another parameter, alpha, that uh, uh, is uh, uh, defining a trade-off towards upsampling versus downsampling that uh, uh, clients might be making. So in this case, based on player size, we select closest uh, within this uh, alpha-defined boundaries uh, <coughs> uh, resolution that's uh, available in, in the uh, rendition set. And uh, then combined model is actually just a minimum of those two uh, uh, functions that we introduced earlier. Why is this minimum will work is because we assume that uh, the uh, encoding ladder is uh, canonical. It's uh, the both bit rates and resolutions are monotonically increasing, and the four uh, choosing the smaller uh, value uh, al uh, always uh, puts us in a regime that is attainable. So, for example, if uh, we uh, limited uh, <coughs> rendition based on uh, resolution, the uh, bitrate will also go down, and therefore we're not going to run into regime where we cannot <coughs> stream it, so, and, and vice versa. So, and uh, how it works, and how how this model works in practice? Well, uh, what we use this model for now is we use it to express uh, conditional load probability given. Uh, of I transition given bandwidth B, and uh, and then we just plot it uh, against uh, experimentally measured data, and, and what we observe uh, observe that it actually fits it pretty well, uh, especially in high bandwidth regime. Of course, discarding the noise, uh, it seems that uh, this model predicts uh, uh, the steady state. Uh, 
uh, selection probabilities that uh, we observed in the field. And, uh, and likewise, in a lower bitrate uh, regime, we see that uh, the transition points between renditions are also uh, predicted pretty uh, accurately. So, uh, and uh, uh, the bus fit is achieved for parameters alpha 088, delta 049, uh, average RMSC 005, so it, it's pretty reasonable. And of course, uh, more sophisticated models could be proposed, but this one is particularly simple. It has just two parameters and uh, it allows us to drive some conclusions. <laughs> And uh, so what we could uh, say by instance is, well, first of all, of course, uh, adaptation to network bandwidth is no longer the only game in town. Modern days, uh, practical players adapt to player sizes. This is uh, fundamental. This needs to be understood and used in analysis of this kind of systems. <clears throat> Second, what we also discovered, and this is even more surprising, is that players don't seem to be adapting to uh, bandwidth uh, quite well. They don't use all available bandwidth. Uh, there is always that uh, gap that is introduced by this parameter delta that uh, uh, players are not utilizing. And uh, uh, in, in uh, practical fit to data that we observe, this parameter is pretty high, 0 0.49. This means that players in practice don't use up to 33% of capacity. Uh, why this is happening? This uh, seems to be uh, you know, uh, something not exactly right. Do modern era engineers study Shannon? Uh, and uh, uh, the last, uh, or, or maybe this is fundamental to HTTP-based streaming. So uh, certainly an area where I, I, we are puzzled and we encourage uh, uh, researchers to, to look at this and uh, maybe there is uh, uh, some learnings uh, and good learnings that could be made for this. And, and finally, we observe that uh, uh, practical players do have certain trade-offs between upscaling and downscaling in high bandwidth regimes. They uh, prefer to upscale more and that seems to be driven by desire to, to be more economical, use fewer bits. And of course, if you downscale, you don't gain anything in the quality, you're just wasting it. So <clears throat> that seems uh, to be pretty reasonable. But the fact that the network is not utilized, that, that to me is, uh, is quite surprising. Now, what are the applications of this model? Well, if we know the uh, client uh, models that we just described as function of uh, bandwidth and uh, player size, we could describe pretty much all the other parameters in the system. We could compute average bitrate, average resolution, average distortion, average quality. If we have a quality model and functions that we can plug in. And it's uh, done by uh, just operating with uh, uh, network bandwidth distribution and player size distribution as uh, independent distributions that could be, again, measured experimentally or uh, inferred uh, based on, uh, you know, some other uh, uh, statistics and, and, and used in practice. Uh, uh, this example is uh, taken from papers that is cited here below, uh, show, showing how uh, this formulas work. So in this case, we use two network models, two, two player models, uh, three models of content, easy, medium, complex, and we compute all these four system parameters and, and they show uh, effects that we could uh, anticipate in practice. So, uh, likewise, if we know the uh, model, we can express average qualities and uh, we could immediately pose problem of design of optimal ladder. So in simplest case, it could be design of ladders that maximizes quality given the limits of the network. Uh, a more constrained case could be if we put a cap on average bitrate and, and try to maximize quality, or we could use reverse problem, try to uh, put a cap on uh, average quality and, and try to uh, minimize bitrate, uh, uh, trying to mix it. Of course, in this case, to put a, min a meaningful limit on average quality, we need to understand what would be the achievable range. So we need to solve first problem first, but uh, it's all doable. And uh, again, this example from same paper shows uh, uh, e examples of optimal ladders designed by using same models and all same statistics. And it actually shows that optimal ladders are better than the ones that we considered before by up to 0.88 MOS. Pretty huge. Now, of course, many other problems could be posed and uh, there are many extensions that could be uh, made and more sophisticated models could be used. Uh, but uh, with this, uh, uh, let me say thank you. And if you have any questions, please let me know.